I want to um, yeah, just say thanks for, for being the church, for bringing it in here today. Uh, I want to welcome you if you've come in uh, after uh, our initial greeting today. Uh, thank you so much for being part of what God's doing in here. Uh, we're going to hear the Word of God in just a few moments, but before we do that, uh, we're going to hear from um, some of my dear friends and some of your dear friends now. Uh, Frank and Pam Grubbs have been with us over a course of maybe three or four years, and have been coming and really just communicating God's heart um, for uh, orphans um, in particular, and they've given their lives and devoted themselves to this cause, and um, every time they come, it's been such a treat for us. Um, I feel like my heart goes a little bit deeper into understanding um, God's heart, not just for, you know, things that um, I'm uh, typically passionate about, that God is passionate about, but it also gives me an opportunity to feel more of God's heart and some of the forgotten passions of God that I tend to bury or to put aside in my heart. And so today we're going to hear from Frank and Pam as they come and share. And always uh, such a treat for us to have them with us. Can we give a warm round of applause to Frank as he comes to share with us? Good morning. Great to be back with you. You know, there are 2,000 verses in the Bible dealing with the poor. God cares about the least of these, the poorest of the poor. And we don't have time for 2,000 verses this morning, but I thought we'd start with 1,500. Um, Okay, maybe 1,000. No, we'll just start with two. This is 1 John 3, 17 and 18. But whoever has this world's goods and beholds his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him. How does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but with actions and in truth. That's basically saying if God has blessed us, we need to be reaching out to those that are less fortunate. It's saying that our actions speak louder than our words. And I'm excited to be a part of Holt International. Holt's actions have been speaking louder than their words For 64 years, for 64 years, Holt has been reaching out to orphans and vulnerable children. One of the ways they do that, child sponsorship. In our family, we sponsor seven kids with Holt. We have seven picture folders like this at home. The reason we do, we we just believe God has blessed us so much. And I don't believe that he's blessed us so we can just have more and more. And if you'd like to sponsor a child or maybe even another child, check out this video then my wife will let you know how you guys can be involved. Our school is named after a woman who has helped thousands of children all around the world, Bertha Holt. But most people just called her Grandma Holt. Bertha Holt lived here in Oregon and was known for being kind to everyone around her. She especially loved children. One day, Bertha and her husband, Harry, saw a movie about children in Korea who had lost their parents in the Korean War. These children didn't have any family to take care of them. Bertha wanted to do something to help because a family was what these children needed most of all. Bertha and Harry decided to adopt eight children from Korea into their family. They believed that every child deserves a loving home. Other families saw that what Bertha and Harry did and wanted to do the same. In 1956, they started Holt International so they could help more and more children find love and families. Today, Holt International works in 13 different countries helping children and families stay healthy and stay together. All around the world, there are kids Just like us, who can't go to school, don't have enough to eat, and even get separated from their families. Let's help kids just like us who live around the world. As Frank mentioned, Holt is able to rescue children. The only way they do that is through sponsorship. When you sponsored children last year and as you continue to sponsor kids, that is the only way that Holt can take these kids that are found and place them in Christian families. Um, The biggest difference between when Holt started is now about half of the children that are found abandoned, Holt can find families, uh, biological family, to reunite them with. I uh, brought up a picture of this little boy, Taeyeon. It says um, he's from an unmarried mother 
his mother was incapable of affording him. And, but so anyway, they found his mom, and Holt is uh, letting her go to beauty school. And this little boy, through sponsorship, can be cared for so that while his mom learns a living, um, he can be cared for and then hopefully reunited with his birth mom. And so um, it's, it's your sponsorship that enables that to happen. Otherwise, he would have just been left and maybe been put in an orphanage. And then as, if you saw the documentary, The Dropbox, the babies that are abandoned, some of them don't make it, many of them. And then those that they do, you don't, they don't want to grow up in an orphanage. They're able, through sponsorship, to be raised in a family. So um, I shared this quote last year. I think it's worth repeating. This is, um, anyway, the 153 million orphaned and vulnerable children worldwide guarantee a continued market from which human traffickers can draw. For children living outside of families, no one will ever know they're missing. There is no moral outcry, no legal search, and likely no one who even cares. As Frank mentioned, there's over 2,000 verses. We know God cares. He tells in, us in his word. And Jeremiah 22:16 reminds us, he gave to the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord. It's God's heart that we get involved. And so I just want to encourage you today uh, to please come back and consider sponsoring your first child, your second child, maybe several of that's what God's calling you to. Um, we look forward to seeing you back at the table. God bless you. Thank you.